us, even moving away from panels, the recent comments, which are uh, today's um, this day front cover, of um, the governor of Zamfara State, Mr. Bello Matawale, saying that if Nigerians knew who was behind the kidnappings, we would all be, our mouths would be agape and what have you. Similar comments were made by his counterparts in Katsina State, Bello Masari. Now, we know that Section 308 of the Constitution does not, even though it confers immunity, it's quite limited, as was tested in court a few times by the late great Gani Farami. So if there's no legal protection for making these kinds of claims, what nature of protection is there? Because you and I could not publicly make such a statement. The DSS would swoop in immediately. The same DSS that has waded in to the strike with the Cattle Herders Association, they, they have invited those people. But they have not invited these governors to shed more light into these people terrorizing Nigeria. But I, I was answer by asking a question. Where is the commander-in-chief? I don't know if you can tell me. Where is the commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Well, you have to answer the question yourself. Dr. Where's Bati, I don't from? know. My simple answer is that I do not know where the commander-in-chief is. There is a clear lacuna in the presidency. You can't convince me to the contrary. When the, somebody went to the ballot, this is a man who sought power for 12 years, 2003, 2007, 2011, he wanted to be president by all means. Nigerians gave him a chance in 2015. Despite his failures, the mandate was renewed in 2019. And as of today, we are being ruled by proxy. Gabashe is the one issuing, you know, offensive statements every day, telling us what the president is saying, as if the president is incapacitated. Where is the president of Nigeria? Because when these governors are saying these things, where some of them pretend to be helpless, or are genuinely helpless. Where is the commander in chief? We saw our, you know, Air Force men who were involved in the unfortunate air disaster mishap. They were buried. The president was not there. Our troops are being slaughtered in the north. The president is not there at their funeral. When last did the president talk to Nigerians? When last did we see the president grant a media charge? When last did we see the president speak with the victims of these kidnaps? When last did we see the president personally taking responsibility for the killings and the rampage that is going on? So if somebody is telling me that I have a president, I will raise an objection. Because the president that I want should not be a decorative president. It shouldn't be a portrait that, you know, is occasionally brought out for photo ops just to have some form of proof of life. Why have we lowered the bar? Why have we reduced this responsibility? When governors are making these incendiary comments, the other time you had the governor of Bauchi State coming out to say, oh, headsmen can carry arms. They are justified to carry AK-47. You have the governor of Zamfara State saying, I will still continue to dialogue with bandits, with terrorists. You have the governor of Niger State saying a different thing. What you are seeing is a nation in crisis. It's a nation in peril. It's a nation that is lacking in direction and leadership. And, you know, we keep trying to be politically correct. The reality at that today is that nobody can tell me that I have a commander-in-chief. You cannot be commanding from your bedroom. Okay. You have okay. to lead from the front. That was what he promised. Okay. He said he will lead from the front. Okay. Today he's not even leading from the back. Okay, I, I want to quickly get your reaction still as well as we're extending this matter. Number one will be, I'll come back to Lagos and I'll ask you another national question. Number one will be, what's the state of the, you know, Lagos uh, uh, panel now? Because there's been some discordant voice, Ebola and Guru are saying this, and that will affect reaching a quorum, correct me if I'm wrong on that. So what's the state of that panel now? And so what's your reaction to words uh, uh, attributed to the likes of uh, Gumi that says, Oh, let's not call them bandits. Let's, let's, let's call them something else. Let's call them probably national treasures. We have less than two minutes to Less it. than two minutes for that. Well, the Quickly. panel is still sitting. I believe they still have quorum. I, okay. I, I, I want to assume so. Let us see what they will come out at the end of the day. On the very insolent and objectionable comment of Gumi, which he made, you know, in your station, I, I am happy Nigerians have, you know, justifiably derided that very toxic comment. But do not forget that if some other person other than Gumi had made that comment, the state security service would have been all over the place looking for that person. But Gumi has not been invited for interrogation. 
He's even saying don't call them terrorists. He was romancing with them. He's even saying no, that journalists are criminal for calling criminals criminals. That is why I ask the question, are we really a country of serious people? Why has Gumi not been invited for interrogation? When Bishop Kuka raised concerns about the clear nepotism in this regime, we saw how he was attacked. When the former deputy governor of the CBN, Obadiah, you know, made a comment, we saw how he was harassed and hunted. Why is Gumi being treated differently? So when you have the, the SSS arresting somebody for calling for the resignation of the president, well, the same worry that the 